Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very, very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I would very much like to continue on with our journey, our discussions, our discoveries, and our explorations with respect to the recent releases made by the Criterion Collection during this year of 2022. Specifically, I'd like to focus on this great release earlier this year, which is at spine number 1162. And this release is three films by Mai Zetterling. And I'd like to focus our attention today, if I may, on one film specifically that is included in this set. It is a work which is described as being from the year 1968. And once again, please pardon me for my poor, poor pronunciation of the Swedish language. I hope you can forgive me. But the name of the film is Flickorna or as it's known in English, The Girls. This is the work described as being from the year 1968, and once again, it is directed by the great, great Mai Zetterling, and the screenplay is by Mai Zetterling and David Hughes, and it has in its uh, fantastic, fantastic cast uh, people like B.B. Anderson and Harriet Anderson and Gunnar Lindblom and others. Uh, this is the work which has so many levels to it, uh, has so many uh, a strands, so many uh, levels of, say, reality and surrealism uh, and uh, actuality and fantasy and time and space in the context of uh, these characters, our main characters, these three women uh, uh, and uh, their... Uh, thoughts and concerns, and also the drama, and I mean that in terms of performance and theater, as well as the drama and emotional uh, connections and their relationships uh, between themselves, between other people, and also vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, their own viewpoints about uh, self-reflexivity and other things. This is the work which is called Flickarna, or as it's known in English, The Girls. So, uh, here is another fascinating work indeed from Maya Zetterling and company. And if we were to try to describe the plot or story structure of this work, The Girls, we understand that uh, this is a work which is uh, focusing in on this theater troupe or group of actors who are uh, putting up a performance of Lysistrata, Aristophanes. And uh, this is the, the story about uh, the uh, certain women who are trying to uh, evade or stop uh, war or military conflict by uh, withholding uh, uh, sex or sexual favors uh, in, in the hopes of trying to uh, dissuade uh, the male soldiers from uh, continuing in m military combat. So as, as a type of dramatic conceit uh, that is, or dr maybe a, um, a metaphorical conceit that is uh, uh, maybe overlapping and forming a type of foundational basis or thematic basis for the film. This is a very fascinating thing indeed, because what this provides to is the opportunity for us, the viewer, uh, through the lens of Mai Zetterling cinema, to examine uh, the viewpoints of each of these uh, main characters uh, that we meet, you know, uh, portrayed by uh, the three main actors. Uh, and uh, their viewpoints about, say, uh, their positions in society uh, as women, uh, and also a type of, of approach to or recognition or I, um, uh, a uh, uh, recognizing and identifying aspects of, say, uh, sexism and objectification through certain avenues. Uh, also, in terms of their relationships with uh, their intimate relationships uh, that they are uh, engaged in or, they, or their uh, marriages or other, uh, uh, say, uh, emotional relationships that might have certain 
uh, aspects of of uh, lack of satisfaction uh, or maybe a sense of uh, a crisis or maybe a sense of need for change uh, for better or for worse depending on again the viewpoint of the characters and also the way in which the externalities and certain say uh, peer pressure or societal pressure points may or may not affect uh, the choices of these uh, characters going forward so uh, we have thus this idea of theater and reality uh, displayed also perhaps uh, overtly or not, uh, there could be a sense of the uh, laying on of certain uh, political overtones. Uh, again, 1960s uh, is the setting and backdrop. And indeed, there are a lot of scenes and a lot of discussions and discourse uh, captured between and among characters, also in terms of actual discourse uh, shown on screen in the dialogue, as well as, say, visions or certain uh, 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 types of viewpoints uh, that could be said to be uh, subjective viewpoints of the characters and or a type of, of, of uh, overall maybe um, omnipotent uh, sense of... Uh, um, a type of accomplished uh, viewpoint vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, Mai Zetterling and her cinema, namely uh, the way in which uh, these women uh, try to maneuver their way or to figure out their place uh, in a society that might seem to have very uh, rigid uh, positionings of, uh, say, uh, uh, sex and gender. And so uh, this is also something that uh, either directly or indirectly is something that each of these characters uh, seems to be combating or confronting or perhaps even resolving, uh, depending on the various choices that uh, each of these characters uh, goes through in their specific character arcs. And so uh, this, and then we have it tied back to, once again, to Aristophanes and um, the, uh, the way in which this, uh, the drama of the theater is then overlapping and in fact uh, um, enmeshing within uh, the quote-unquote reality of the situations. Thus, this brings us to another great avenue of discussion of Mai Zetterling cinema, again in the form of a film like The Girls. There are so many moments of kind of, of uh, almost uh, a zany, uh, surreal aspects, cuts that seem to go suddenly from one area to another, uh, aspects of maybe jump cutting or maybe uh, fantasies that are suddenly thrust upon us as viewers almost uh, all of a sudden, maybe without any warning. And there's a brilliant aspect to this. Uh, it has a, a sense of the, almost a carnivalesque uh, in the way in which uh, uh, various, say, modes or scenarios are introduced to us. And again, those modes, modes or scenarios could be said to be part of the quote-unquote aspect of the real uh, storyline that's going on versus the, say, dreamlike structure or the surreal or fantasy structure sequences that are then uh, thrust upon us. Again, I think it's meant to shock. I think it's also meant to provoke. It's also meant to uh, show us the direct link between uh, the uh, subjective consciousness and also what we see objectively, how it's expressed through objective cinematic terms. And so, therefore, this is a way to say that my Zetterling cinema is very much an expression, a deep and direct and honest and uh, uh, quite close uh, representation of the psychological uh, aspects of the characters that we see because what they fantasize about or what they envision is what we see uh, uh, portrayed before our very eyes. And sometimes those fantasies or those surreal visions or those episodes aren't always necessarily aspects of their wants or desires per se, but maybe their recognition or their uh, understanding of certain, say, aspects of, of uh, the unfair points of society, let's put it that way, and lies and deceit uh, that uh, maybe often are the case uh, between the relationships, specifically the relationships between the men and the women uh, that we see uh, highlighted or spotlighted here in this film, The Girls. So that is one aspect, you know, the idea of the uh, surreal takes uh, bringing forth or, rec or uh, showing us the irony and the hypocrisy of a lot of the uh, situations of communication between, say, couples that we see uh, in the context of the story, the girl. So this is, uh, but it's done in a almost a uh, in a way that's uh, at the same time very dramatic, but also very playful. Uh, has a sense of the frolic and the sense of a of a type of buoyancy about it, which I, I admire very much. There's also this celebratory atmosphere that also gives way to a sense of breakdowns of relationships, but also when there's breakdowns and, sh and showings of breakdowns, there's also the potential for build-ups or uh, repairing or remedying, or perhaps if remedying or repairing uh, pre-existing uh, uh, relationships that are broken down, 
might not be possible, there's also the hope for something new, fresh, something uh, different, some new relationship that could uh, form or arise, or perhaps a reestablishment, or perhaps a new establishment of the feeling of independence and self-worth and, and self-value that uh, some of these characters could potentially uh, find themselves uh, having and acquiring over the course of their respective character arcs as we see them uh, in the context of this film, The Girls. So uh, there is so much richness here on display. Uh, there is so much interweaving of multiple levels. Uh, it has a sense of drama within drama. And that drama within drama within drama, indeed, uh, is uh, uh, um, celebrated and extolled and uh, quite quite uh, uh, beautifully rendered. Uh, in the uh, hands of uh, Mai Zetterling and her cinema and uh, the way in which things are arranged and organized. And I dare, I dare say, too, uh, there's almost an, uh, uh, this brilliant abruptness to the way in which uh, certain scenes are interwoven with each other and the way in which uh, things seem to be upended. And so uh, I like that, uh, that type of effervescent uh, feeling. Uh, it's something that we've seen in previous films that are included in the set. You know, we spoke a little bit about when we talked about Loving Couples and indeed about Night Games, how those films also traversed time and space and reality even into the realm of memory and the past and uh, surreality or surrealism. And indeed, that is the case uh, here with the girls too. I should point out also that when there are moments of say, of say, um, epiphany or realization, they're also accompanied uh, quite often by a cinematic style that can be said to be very experimental. And there are moments in this film from a cinematic styling perspective that are quite quite jarring uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, brilliant uh, for that. And there are moments of, say, warping of image and uh, almost like in, in a way sort of a, uh, a uh, man manipulation in like a mirror fashion of uh, uh, certain shots which i think is very suggestive of a sense of of maybe an acceptance or perhaps a non-acceptance of the reality of the situation the social mores of the time uh, as a manner of speaking and so that that type of realization or maybe non-realization uh, as expressed through cinema, through my Zetterling cinema, and the and almost the direct uh, experimental nature of some of the aspects, I think is one of the key points that makes the film The Girls so fascinating and so rewatchable and so uh, engaging and engaging and engaging some more because uh, it offers so much on its palette, on its plate, uh, and it's well balanced. And also to the balance between and among the stories uh, because we have uh, three separate lines or perhaps uh, different characters that we follow uh, throughout the course of this uh, this work. And so much like uh, a number of the other films uh, by Mai Zetterling, uh, we have what could be said to be this episodic or short story-like structure with a lot of interconnectivity as well. This uh, character balance or this narrative balance is so expertly crafted and expertly uh, rendered uh, much like her other works as well, Loving Couples, I think, had a similar type of dynamic, which was so uh, beautifully balanced. Same thing, too, with Night Games. Here with the girls, the balance act between and among the uh, various character arcs and subplots is, is uh, r remarkable. It is so accomplished, so polished, so remarkable indeed. Uh, there is uh, never any, there's never a dull moment and there's never any misstep. Uh, that is felt uh, uh, by any stretch. And so uh, this has the, uh, the potential and capability of having so much rewatchability, as well as a reflection of the time and place and a type of, uh, and I think it's been described too in some of the liner notes and also by, for instance, Alicia Malone and others, and perhaps also by Mai Zetterling as well uh, in some of the other disc supplements as being uh, a very maybe overtly uh, political film or maybe an overtly uh, feminist film. And I think those viewpoints or that, uh, those interpretations, I think, are very apropos. Uh, and indeed, there are aspects, again, embodied by the stories of these characters themselves and what it is they're facing. The recognition of certain impediments, uh, societal impediments as well as emotional impediments and how they are either overcome or not as being itself an example of uh, 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 feminist uh, uh, storytelling or storytelling that is based upon uh, aspects or notions or dialogues uh, within the, uh, say, uh, the sphere or realm of, uh, of uh, feminist concerns. That's one, I think, 
uh, way of viewing this film. And it's a very appropriate way of viewing this film. Is what it's a very reasonable interpretation. But also another interpretation would be uh, as a means by which uh, Mai Zetterling is using this film as another opportunity to examine uh, the inner core of these uh, characters as human beings, as uh, people who are really struggling and indeed questioning and indeed uh, giving us, uh, uh, through the full display of the cinema, uh, their heart and soul when they're questioning. And sometimes those questions for the characters might yield very uneasy answers indeed, maybe embarrassing answers indeed, but uh, that is okay uh, because uh, we are given not only this opportunity to know them, but we also can understand and maybe sympathize and empathize with their conditions. And that's one of the great strengths of my Zetterling cinema, I would say, in the context of a film like The Girls or Others uh, in this set, which is uh, we never lose sight uh, through her lens. We never lose sight of the, uh, the humane uh, perspective or to look at these characters uh, with a, a sense of uh, uh, the humane the sense of uh, the respectful and uh, we might see certain flaws in characterization in in the way that they interact with others we might see certain uh, uh, decisions that they might make in terms of the plot might which might be say quote-unquote mistakes or not you be the judge of that of course but uh, ultimately and amongst all that and because of that we are still uh, privy to these characters and their growth through their character arcs as human beings and i think that is Again, another great strength of a work like The Girls, as well as uh, the other works in this uh, great series of films. So, uh, my dear friends, another brilliant, brilliant work. Uh, there are some comments, too, that she makes at the very start of one of the, it's called Meeting Mai, uh, which is the, the supplement on the first Blu-ray disc, uh, which relates a little bit to the uh, critical reception of this work, The Girls, uh, uh, in the late 1960s and how it affected her career and how she regarded it as a type of critical flop. Uh, now it's uh, regarded as being uh, one of uh, the great films and one of uh, Mai Zetterling's uh, most uh, lauded and most celebrated works and for good reason. Uh, this work is uh, so wide, uh, wide uh, in scope and so, uh, so much uh, depth and so much purpose and meaning and also so much feeling and so much activity uh, that one cannot uh, cannot uh, uh, take one's eyes away from the screen. It is so absorbing and so engaging. What a film this is and so brilliant that it's included here uh, for uh, hopefully many people to be able to watch this and the other works, of course, by Zetterling that are included here. This being the film, which is The Girls. The Criterion Collection has released this film, The Girls, The Corona, uh, which is, again, from the year 1968. And it's released it on this Blu-ray disc, which is the third Blu-ray disc of this three-disc set, uh, three films by Maya Zetterling. And uh, just a note about the restorations, uh, which can be found on page 32 of this great booklet. It says, Loving Couples, Night Games, and The Girls are presented in their original aspect ratio of 1.66 to 1. These 2K digital restorations were undertaken by SF Studios and the Swedish Film Institute from the 35mm original camera negatives. The original Monaro soundtracks were remastered from the 35mm optical soundtrack positives. So, like my comments about the restorations uh, that I made with regard to loving couples and uh, night games. I s will say here that, again, my experience with the girls is very, 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 very limited indeed. I have no frame of reference. I have never had the opportunity, unfortunately, to have been able to see this film in the theater, for example. Never had any experience with any, any quality print, etc. So uh, my frame of reference is nil. Uh, however, uh, uh, that notwithstanding, my experience with this Criterion release uh, was uh, truly uh, uh, breathtaking. I was thoroughly, thoroughly engaged. I thought that uh, the film was wonderful and the presentation uh, took nothing away from that. It was not at all distracting. On the contrary, it was so absorbing and I was, I, I fell into the work in a manner of speaking in terms of the look and the sound. So I am very, very happy, very impressed with how the girls' looks and sounds as well as my feelings for the other works included in this set. So uh, I'm a very, very happy, uh, happy uh, customer indeed in terms of the purchase of this product from Criterion uh, with regard to the restorations or the presentation.
And uh, that's not all too, because this third disc has a supplement section, or I should say there is one supplement. It doesn't, it, there, the submenu doesn't say supplement, but actually says the title, which is Lines from the Heart. And this is a work, this is a type of uh, feature length work, approximately an hour and 16 minutes. And uh, it's uh, described as being from 1996. And this is a very fascinating, described as a type of documentary, uh, which is the uh, the three actors from The Girls, uh, B.B. Anderson, uh, Harriet Anderson, and uh, Gunnar Lindblom. Uh, they are each seen visiting uh, the house of Mai Zetterling. And uh, this is, of course, after Mai Zetterling has passed away. And they now, uh, the three of them, are assembling and gathering and meeting at the house. And uh, they are uh, taking the opportunity and occasion to uh, revisit aspects of their careers and also revisit and talk about aspects of Mai Zetterling cinema vis-a-vis uh, -vis their interactions with her and the work that they had, such as the girls and then other works, of course, like Loving Couples in the case of, of Gunnar Lindblom and uh, Harriet Anderson. Uh, so uh, this is a very interesting uh, setup and engagement. And I say documentary, but there are moments where you can see that things are set up in a way that uh, uh, these actors are almost like characters in a film. And they we see them uh, in uh, very carefully and quite uh, effectively staged setups. Uh, at the same time, giving them the opportunity to be themselves and to speak in the moment and to talk about uh, things, details like uh, things in the moment, like uh, like uh, uh, how delicious the tomatoes are, or, or going sh uh, shopping in the market, or sitting and talking about and wondering and pondering about the certain uh, purposes and uh, the backdrop behind why uh, Mai Zetterling made a film like The Girls, for instance. Was it a political film or something, as they posit and, and consider? And also each of them, too, uh, talk a little bit, too, about their own careers and their own backgrounds in a manner of speaking, in their own uh, wonderfully uh, personalized and individual way. So uh, and there's a moment, too, a little bit earlier on, we actually see them watch uh, some of the films. So it's it's uh, a very, uh, very uh, intricate and intriguingly assembled uh, work, a documentary, that is also a celebration of the works of, my, of the legacy of Mai Zetterling, as well as a celebration of the lives and careers of these great actors, we have assembled again their work is uh, forever uh, forever memorialized in cinema for all eternity in many works uh, such as the works of Mai Zetterling so uh, such as the work like the girls so this is yet another one, one might say a type of portrait or a type of celebration of the legacy of Mai Zetterling writ large one can say it's probably not f focused uh, entirely or exclusively on the girls per se, but rather it has a, a broad scope that is also focusing in on the lives and careers of these actors uh, that are participating in this project as well. So this is a very uh, fascinating uh, entry in the supplements. And again, another way, another avenue to further celebrate the legacy of Mai Zetterling, thus giving credence to the description of this set overall by Criterion as being a means by which one can celebrate the legacy and learn about the legacy and life and times and films and be, be introduced to the life and times and films of this great artist who is my Zetterling. So here's another example of such celebration. It's a really great inclusion. So please check it out if you can. It's called Lines from the Heart from 1996. It's approximately an hour and 16 minutes. And with that, my dear friends, that uh, concludes the supplements. Once again, it would have been interesting to see maybe other supplements. It would have been interesting to see more maybe film-specific discussions uh, on the girls itself. Maybe a commentary track would have been really awesome indeed. Uh, but the fact that we don't get those, that's not in any way a bad thing because, again, we get some really fantastic uh, supplements already that, through various perspectives, celebrate the legacy of Mai Zetterling and introduce us further into the world of Mai Zetterling. So uh, please check these out if you can, including the supplement on disc number three. Now, to conclude this discussion, let me just point out again, like with the other films, this great booklet has uh, some uh, a couple pages devoted exclusively to the girls, a write-up on the film as well as cast and crew write-up. This is can be found, excuse me, this can be found on pages eight and nine of the booklet. And then afterwards, we'll have a comprehensive essay, which we'll talk about a little bit in a separate video. 
And so with that, my dear friends, this is disc three, which features this brilliant, brilliant work of art from Maya Zetterling, which is The Girls. Please, please, I, I beg, I beg you, please check this out if you haven't already. It is such a fascinating and uh, 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 um, it has this type of joie de vivre aspect to it as well as being uh, very, very dramatic and also very clever in terms of its interweaving of multiple, multiple levels all at once. Uh, such a great uh, story or set of stories as well as a great example of the cinema of my Zetterling. This is the work which is The Girls. All right, my dear friends, so that's it for now. And so until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, great, great movies. There will be one more video uh, to wrap up this discussion on this great set of three films by Maya Zetterling. So uh, if you're interested, uh, I hope to see you at the next video on this set discussion. But until then, my friends, uh, please uh, stay strong, stay safe, and cheers. Thank you.